How would you like to profit like the banks do? The banking sector makes hundreds of billions of dollars every single year by loaning out money. And you can do the same. Okay, maybe not the hundreds of billions of dollars part in the beginning, but running a private money lending business is a great way to earn money on your money. In this video, I'll break down the benefits of a private lending business, how you can mitigate your risk and the process to get started. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share where you can find borrowers who will pay you anywhere between eight to 25% annually to borrow your money. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Private money lending is when an individual or a business loans another investor their personal funds to use for investment purposes. In real estate, it's an alternative option for financing an investment property outside of a traditional bank or lending institution. You might be wondering why anyone would want to borrow money outside of a traditional bank or lending institution. So let's start with the benefits from the borrower's perspective. Number one, using private money allows active real estate investors to grow and scale their portfolio very quickly. Active real estate investors would be flipping properties, using the Burr method, house hacking and so on. Basically anyone who needs an influx of cash for a short period of time. Number two, debt service ratios may be offside. Some private borrowers may not qualify to borrow money at a traditional lending institution. The big banks have very strict rules and criteria that they follow in order to lend out money. And if you are outside of the parameters of their qualifications, you'll not qualify to be a borrower. Number three, private lending has much more flexible terms. Everything is negotiable with a private loan. The amount of time you need the money, the interest rate, the payment terms, the lender fees, and when and how you pay those funds back. Number four, no refinances within 12 months. Many lending institutions will not consider a refinance of a property within 12 months of buying the property. They are concerned there could be fraudulent activity. So if you plan to use the Burr strategy where you buy a property, renovate it, rent it out, and then refinance it, and you plan to do that all within six months, you will have a hard time getting a traditional bank to refinance it within your time frame. Number five, securing long-term financing. Getting long-term financing on a property is much easier when you already own a property versus trying to buy it. So if you can get a private loan to buy the property and then move it to a traditional lender with lower rates, your chances of being approved go up significantly when you own the property already. These are all great benefits to the borrower of your money, but what are the benefits for you as the lender? Number one, passive investing. This is a very passive form of investor. Other than doing your due diligence in the beginning and checking in on the loan every once in a while, there's really nothing else to do. So for those of you who are looking to make a solid return in the real estate market without having to do any of the work, this can be very effective. Number two, consistent returns. Private lending delivers very consistent returns. If you loan out your money at an interest rate of 10% annually, you're going to make 10% annually on your money. In comparison, if you're investing in the stock market, your returns will fluctuate greatly. Number three, security. Your money is secured against an asset. In other words, against a property or a piece of real estate. Unlike the stock market where you're investing in a company, your money is going towards owning an actual tangible asset. If you invest in the stock market and the company goes bankrupt, you have nothing to show for it. If you were to lend out your money to an individual and they went bankrupt, you would still own that piece of real estate, an actual asset that has value. Number four, fees are all paid. In private lending, the borrower pays all of your fees. They might pay a lender fee, your legal fees, the fees for your appraisals, and many more. So when you're lending out your money, you have no overhead or expenses. Number five, registered funds. You can use registered funds in private lending. If you're in Canada, you can use your RSPs, your RIFs, your LIRAs, your RESPs, your TFSAs. Anything registered with the government of Canada can be used in private lending. If you're in the US, you can use your 401k or your Roth IRA. The benefits of these are that you can be in a tax-free or tax-deferred environment while making a return in the real estate market. For more information on exactly how to set up your registered funds for private lending, check out this video right here after this video. So far, this all sounds pretty good, but I know what you're thinking. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. What are the risks? Investing of any kind has potential risks, but private lending is a relatively secure investment if you go about it in the right way. The worst case scenario is that your lender doesn't pay you back your money. But remember, we are acting just like a bank and following the same legal rules the banks do. So we have the choice to force what's called a power of sale when we are a private lender, which means that if the borrower doesn't pay me my money, I can sell the property and pay myself back with the proceeds. This is why it's important for us as private lenders to mitigate our risk. We can do this by looking at the loan to value amount, the position the mortgage is in, a loan could be registered against the title in first, second, or third position. 
The history of the borrower is also very important along with the type of property, the location of the property, and the plan for the property. How much risk you're willing to take on is up to you as the private lender. But the good thing with private lending is your rates that you can charge are a direct reflection of the amount of risk you are willing to take on. So the higher the risk, the higher the reward. The process to set up a private loan is relatively straightforward. Step one, find a suitable borrower. Step two, make them an offer. In that offer, you would lay out the loan amount, the interest rate you will charge, the position the mortgage will be in, any associated fees, the loan term length, and whether the loan will be an open loan or a closed loan. In other words, whether the loan can be paid back early with no penalties or whether the amount of interest being charged is a fixed rate regardless of whether they pay out early or not. Step three is performing your due diligence. This would be a review of the borrower's documents that you have requested and an appraisal of the property and anything else you feel is necessary. Step four, lawyer review. Your lawyer will draft a loan commitment. This would be all of the terms that were laid out in step two, as well as the legal wording should anything go wrong. Step five, sign the legal documents with your lawyer. Step six, advance your funds to the borrower. Step seven, check in on the progress throughout the loan term. Step eight, close out the loan at the end of the term. And step nine, repeat the process. As you start to build your private lending business, the process should become more and more familiar and should take you less and less time. Now, as promised, I wanted to share the best places to find private borrowers. By far the best place is through real estate investing networking groups. As an active real estate investor myself, I am always borrowing private money. Another great place to find private borrowers is through an investment focused mortgage broker. They always have active real estate investing clients looking to borrow private funds. And another great place is through a real estate focused lawyer or attorney. They often have clients who are consistently borrowing private money. Get in with all of these types of groups, let them know you have funds to invest and build these relationships and watch them grow over time. If you want to learn more about setting up a private lending business, check out my free masterclass webinar on my website or I'll leave a link in the description below. If you've got questions related to private money lending or anything else real estate investing related, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.